grace, mercy, and peace be to you all. In the name of God, our Father, and our Lord, and Savior, Jesus. Amen. Could you join me in a word of prayer? Mm -hmm. Almighty God, we give you great thanks for your work. For your work, Lord, and, and causing us to worship. For your work, Lord, and, and causing us to live. Lord, for your work and causing the sun to shine. Your work, Lord, in bringing rain upon the earth. Lord, we thank you for your work. And we ask you to help us in. We ask this Jesus in your name. Amen. Today uh, we're going to talk about perspective. And I, I think perspective is one of the most interesting things that, that uh, exists in the world. How we see things, how we perceive things, how we use our senses to tell one thing from another thing from another thing. Uh, the whole kind of thing came up on, on Sunday. I started looking again at this week's text, and I was, I was just like, okay, so what do you do with these three? What do you, what do you have with them? How does this work? Uh, when you have three texts, that uh, do you talk about storms? Do you talk about peace? Do you talk about what do you talk about with all of these things? And so I'm sitting there, and then on Monday, I was blessed to have a conversation with somebody uh, in which I fundamentally believed that I was correct. <laughs> and that this person was overreacting to what I said. This wasn't even my wife, I know. <laughs> but it, I, 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 it, was, it was just nice, like, I'm, I'm sitting there and it started off as a perfectly innocent conversation. But by the time it was over, there was this, like, animosity. And this was like over the course of like a minute and a half. It's like, what happened in this minute and a half? Well, well I said some things, they said some things, and, and, and things just kind of went beyond the level of, of good. <laughs> it's really where they went beyond. And I'm like, what happened? I mean, everything I said was just fine. It was perfectly innocent. You know what that is? <laughs> And so, so you, you're having this conversation. And, and you go and you have to figure at some point, what did I miss? What was I not seeing? And so then I went back to these texts again later on, Tuesday, on Monday night and then on Tuesday. And I was like, you know what, one of the things that that's kind of constant and resonant through these texts is that perspective is tremendously important when you deal with God. Perspective uh, seems like it actually makes a bigger difference in a, in a lot of other things that happen in life. So we're going to look today at perspective. Perspective is important. The, the first text from Job, the whole background of Job, Job loses everything. Uh, there's this kind of terrible calamity, and, and eventually Job is kind of saying, you know, vindicate me, God. Uh, God, make, make this right. And on some level, there's also a Job, there's this feeling of, why me? I have been upright, I have been good, I have done all the things that I was supposed to have done, and now I still have nothing. And God says to him, where were you? when I laid the foundations of the earth. Where were you when I, I made all this happen? Which isn't a good response, quite frankly. <laughs> Dear God, I'm suffering. Well, where were you when I made stuff? Well, then you're not answering my question, God. <laughs> in, Cor in Corinth, Paul is, is, is having this, again, long discussion with these Corinthian people, this Corinthian church. Uh, and and the, the question they're essentially asking, that they've been asking, is what is in this for me? What do I get out of this? Anybody ever ask that question of any relationship in their life? Any <laughs> church, people ask us of church, they ask it all the time. What am I getting out of this? And Paul says, Well, you're getting us. You're getting God. Yeah, with us, you know, look, look what it is to be a disciple of Jesus. Hey, and beatings and persecution. Uh, yeah, okay. If you're getting some of this, this is this is what you're getting. You're getting us who are willing to be faithful unto death. Now, 
here in this time is the time of God's favor, that even in the middle of all of these things that could be rightly perceived as terrible, God is bringing his blessing. That's what you're getting. On the boat. Wind and waves. Furious squall. Terrifying. Terrifying. Jesus is sleeping. The disciples, they go to Jesus, who is sleeping during the middle of this terrible uh, wind and waves squall. Thing, and they wake him up and they say, Jesus, don't you care? Don't you care? How many people have asked that of God? Don't you care, God? Don't you care that this is happening? People in Duluth, how many people in Duluth are asking that? How many people ask that all the time in the middle of some tragedy, some disease, some something, where they're sitting there and they look to God and, and God <laughs> appears to be sleeping. And the perspective on God is that he's not going to do anything. But Jesus, he wakes up on the boat. He asked them, why were you so afraid? Perspective is tremendously important as we read the Bible. It's tremendously important as we live because we have these questions, we have these experiences. Now, one of the things about perception is that it is also incredibly limited. I've, I've, I've kind of collected this whole great gathering of various perception tests. And I know, which is a random thing to collect. Um, I collect perception tests. Um, perception is, is limited. There, there's a study done at Harvard. Uh, it's called the Invisible Gorilla Study. Has anybody ever heard of the Invisible Gorilla Study? So, so there's these, these two teams. Uh, one team of three people wearing black shirts and one team of people wearing white shirts. And they're asked, they, at Harvard, they ask the students to look uh, to look and count how many times the team wearing white passed the ball in this video. And, and so people dutifully did this. And at some point during this, a gorilla, or a person in a gorilla suit, walks out and walks across the passing for nine seconds. Very blatantly obvious. At the end of the clip, as, as they did this test, they, they asked these students who, who took the test, how many of you saw the gorilla? 50% did not see the gorilla. If I had a projector right here, I could show you this. Fat, you would see the gorilla. But you're so perceptively focused on how many times did the players in white pass the ball that you miss it. Perception is limited. Eyewitness testimony has, has become to uh, come under assault because it's easy for us to misremember or misplace. Perception is tremendously limited as human beings. And it's especially extra limited when we don't even try. I have on your sheets, we will hand out sheets inside the worship folder. I have this little Little sheet. This is another one of those perception tests from the psychology one. Right? And the question that, that is asked of these two lines, you happen to have a sheet, is which line is longer? Right? Now, if you've been through psychology 101, you know the answer is they're both the same. Look at them. Does not the one on top look longer? You can know fully. That it's not, but it looks like it. It looks very much like it. Perception is limited if we do not try, and sometimes if we are not forced to have a different perspective, then we will find ourselves in all sorts of trouble. How many of you are here today are sitting here like, well, this is a different perspective? <laughs> right? Like, normally you're much further away. Some of you try to find the seat furthest in the back so that you can recreate the worship experience upstairs. <laughs> you have today, here in this room, a change of perception. This is different. You don't normally do this. We don't normally do this in general. 
How many of you are comfortable with your change in perception? And this is one of the things that I think Jesus does with his disciples, is that as he does his work, they are forced to see something different. They are forced to engage with the world differently. You look to Paul. And the question, what's in it for me? What breaks that question? You look at Job and, and, and the, the question of why this? What breaks that question? What changes the perspective on that question? Well, that's what we're going to conclude with today. Today, today we have this word of God that, that perhaps intentionally messes with our perception. I mean, you can even go back to the, the, the foundational act of, of Jesus' work and ministry among us, the crucifixion. The crucifixion is this moment of God's great power. It is Jesus, how we theologically have come to understand the crucifixion of Jesus. But if you were simply sitting there looking upon it in that day, you would say, well, this guy's lost. He's done. The crucifixion is a place where Jesus displays his power. So, how do we develop the eyes of God to see that power? Let's go back to Job for a second. The text of Job. Verse 4. Where were you when I laid the earth's foundations? When God looks, when God is, is, is looking at, at his creation, when God is dealing with his creation, the first thing that God has to deal with, that you have to understand about God, that, that would be helpful for you to understand about yourself as you develop and mature as Christians, is that having a long-term vision is the best and most helpful thing. If you live for today, you will have all sorts of trouble for today. Nothing will make sense. If you live simply for today, you're going to have trouble. So God, he looks at Job, and Job in the middle of the day of his trouble, God says, where were you when this happened a long time ago, pal? And it's really not answering the question, but in a way, for God, in God's perception, it is answering exactly the question of Job. Job, what's your long-term vision? What are you seeing? The second thing that helps us to develop the eyes of God is what Paul talks about in Corinthians. That these people who are are fundamentally obsessed with what is in this for me. That they develop wide open hearts instead. Your heart is incredibly important to the way in which you process things. Do you know that? If you see something and your heart is hardened to it, what will you do? Nothing. You will ignore it. You will interpret it according to where your heart is. So Paul, he had the option with these people who were selfish, who said, what is in this for me? And he said, look, we're not going to just write you off because our hearts are wide open. Our hearts are wide open for you. And so we're not going to be done. But if your heart is hardened, if your heart is simply for yourself, you will find all sorts of things you are missing. Okay? It's the second key to developing the vision of God. The last one is trust in the power of Jesus. And here's why this one is particularly important. That as the disciples and the wind and the wave and the squall comes up and, and all of this is happening, they went and even though they, they could do nothing, I mean, you, when you're out on a boat, I mean, unless you have a weather machine, there's nothing you can really do about this, right? Anybody have a weather machine? No. 
They're out there on the boat, and they still find one place to turn to. They turn to Jesus. They trust that he'll do something. Here's what that means, I think. Even when we perceive wrongly, even when we and our perceptions are not quite accurate or are all there, Jesus is still for us. God, throughout the Bible, one of the great things about God, God never doubts his ability to work. He never sits there and be like, gosh, I don't know, maybe. If I try really hard this time. Right? Developing a God-like vision. Seeing how God would see. A huge part of that is trusting in God's ability to work. That he will do what he sets out to do. And he will do it in ways that mess with your perception. Our crucifixion. His, his crucifixion. Our resurrection. Entering the world as a baby. I mean... These are not things that, that you would typically associate with great power. At least the crucifixion and the incarnation, the birth and the death of Jesus. But God operates not so that we are comfortable, but so that we are challenged. So that we are able to look and we are able to say, look, is my heart right? In this conversation that I had with this person, after at a good 36 hours or so, I said, you know, maybe they were thinking about this. Huh. Well, I probably shouldn't have said that, and the other thing, and the other thing, and the other thing either. <laughs> and maybe that one other thing, that was probably inappropriate. We don't always get it right. We are always with God. We always have the chance to come back and develop this vision. The center where God will be seen in his work. Where God will be seen in his weakness, that is strength. Where God will be seen in his glory for us. Amen. You join me in prayer. Lord Jesus, we thank you. We thank you that we were not there when you laid the foundation of the earth. And so Lord, that we would be challenged today to see how you have been working for a long time. Lord, we thank you that we we often find ourselves in places where we ask what's in it for me so that we would be challenged to live with open hearts and see your favor. Lord, we thank you for the things that come and challenge us in this life. The storms, the squalls, the, the opportunities we have to be afraid so we, Lord, would see what it is to put our trust in you. Lord, be with us today as you mess with us, as you challenge us. In your name, Jesus. Amen. I invite you to stay.